I wake up in the morning and I think it's all a dream. Someone knows exactly what happened that night. I just was trying to get him where he needed to go. 19-year-old Praveen Varughese was the life of the party and the life of his family in Morton Grove, Illinois, outside Chicago. He could talk in many, many accents, and he'll come up with the stories that you will laugh. His parents, Lovely and Matthew, had three kids. Praveen was the middle child and the only boy. He ran track in high school and was studying law enforcement as a sophomore at Southern Illinois University. He was here every other week and he would drive six hours and come here to see us. But on February 12th, 2014, Praveen was back at school for a party. Lovely was happy he was having fun. She couldn't imagine how their lives were about to change. You've had a lot of tough days. Every day is hard. I wake up in the morning and I think, it's all a dream. It was a frigid cold weekend at SIU in downstate Illinois. The temperature, 14 degrees. Friends say Praveen was feeling no pain, wearing just a t-shirt, no jacket, and having some drinks at a house party. He was fine. He was like in a good mood, happy, talking to all of us. These girls say he was supposed to meet up with them after the party, but never showed. Back in Chicago, one of Praveen's girlfriends got a muffled call from Praveen. She said it just sounded like someone was running. And he said, don't hang up. Then his cell phone disconnected. The next night, Lovely got a call. Not from Praveen, it was the police. Her son was missing. Everything changed. That moment, everything changed. Stunned, the Varughese family jumped in their car and made the long drive through the night as fast as they could. The beginning of a journey that would test this family in ways they never imagined. They checked into a hotel off campus. Lovely says she sensed her son was close by. I had a weird feeling in my stomach, and I really believe that he was alive and maybe was looking for us. They offered $15,000 for information leading to his whereabouts. Continuing coverage now on a missing college student. The reward went out and the calls came in. One from Jonathan Stanley. He was watching the local NBC station with his cousin and heard about the missing Carbondale student. Stanley went right to Carbondale police later that night with critical information. Acting on the tip from Stanley, police searched the woods that night, right next to the hotel where Lovely and her family were holding vigil. Five days after Praveen went missing, police found a partially clothed body deep in the woods. It was Praveen. Detectives broke the news to the family. Both shoes were off, but they were found very nearby. The coroner's report said hypothermia caused his heart and lungs to fail. Detectives said their extensive investigation found Praveen left the house party and hitched a ride with this man, a stranger named Gage Bethune. He was the tipster's cousin. I was leaving the party, okay. and he came up to my window and said, hey, give me a ride. In Bethune's interview with Carbondale Police, hours before Praveen's body was discovered, he described himself as a good Samaritan, lending a hand to a young man in the cold. I'm a nice guy. I hope just about anybody I see. If I see an old woman standing on the side of the road with a bag full of groceries, I'm going to help her out. Police say Praveen had been drinking heavily when he got into the truck. Bethune said Praveen called someone and talked about cocaine as they drove around town. Did he ever offer to get you any cocaine for the ride? No. Did I don't do cocaine. Bethune said Praveen became combative when he asked for gas money, then refused to get out of his truck. I was like, dude, I've told you ten times to get out of my vehicle now, and then he starts to get aggressive, and then he just gave me a little pop. Just a little, just a little pop. He was, you know, screaming at me, cussing at me, and he hit me, and then I pull over and I walked around just simply gonna get the kid out he jumped out and he swung on me self-defense I swung back. Bethune told police he turned off the truck before the two men fought for fear he might steal it. Fight maybe lasted 30 seconds. I myself I wouldn't even really call it a fight. Mm -hmm. A little scuffle. Minutes later at 12 33 a.m. a state trooper spotted the empty truck and stopped to investigate. Bethune who stood 5'10 and weighed 170 says he yelled cops and Praveen took off over a fence into the woods. It's like he was overruling me. You know, I was scared for my life. Sure. I didn't know what he was capable of. Okay. Definitely wasn't my race. I'm not used to being on that type of 
in the population. According to the trooper's report, Bethune came up the hill and told him a black man tried to rob him and he'd just run into the woods. The trooper searched with a flashlight but didn't find anything and left. The search continues this morning for an SIU student. When the story of a missing student made the news four days later, Bethune says he immediately recognized the face and told his cousin. Put two and two together real quick and I just couldn't, honestly, I couldn't look at the screen. Okay. Maybe sick to my stomach that the boy, was, the boy didn't show up home. We are still living with a nightmare with a broken heart day by day. The details of Praveen's death were horrific. At one point, confusion set in, and he took off his clothes and shoes, as many freezing victims do, mistakenly thinking he was overheating, not dying of hypothermia. Ravin had a comfortable life for 19 years. He didn't need to die here. We retraced Praveen's steps that night and talked to the friends Praveen was partying with. They said at 5'7", 150 pounds, he was the last person to pick a fight. And they say, contrary to police reports, he had not had that much to drink. Was he slurring his words? No. Staggering? No. Out of control? No. He left the party around 11.30 p.m. and was supposed to meet those girls soon after. It was a cold night. Do you think he needed a ride to get out of the cold? The bar he was going to, or like should have been going to, was like, what, three blocks away? I just don't understand like why he was in the car in the first place. The story didn't make sense to Praveen's family either. Why would he get into a stranger's truck? And what about Bethune's statement about cocaine? Still, the coroner found no drugs in Praveen's system. But when his parents made the difficult trip to view their son's body, they say they couldn't believe what they found. He had bruises from here to here, big one, that you could really see, even on his nose. Lovely is a nurse, but says you did not need medical training to see her son had been seriously injured. Police said he'd probably been bruised by branches as he ran into the woods. Lovely didn't believe it. Seeing his injuries, there has to be more than that. So the family hired Dr. Ben Margolis, who got his medical training at the University of Chicago. Where'd you go to undergrad? I went to Harvard University. Margolis reached a far different conclusion from the coroner. His second autopsy showed that bruise on Praveen's face wasn't his only injury, and it wasn't minor. It's a sign of blunt force trauma. Dr. Margolis found three bruises on Praveen's face, and what he described as a deep defensive bruise on his right forearm. A sign Margolis said Praveen may have been fighting for his life. How deep was that bruise? That bruise was right down to the bone. Uh, that was not an accident. Not something he'd get running through the woods, he said. And remember the police theory that Praveen was drunk? Margolis found only small amounts of alcohol. We are very upset the way the Carbondale police handled the case. I keep picturing my son defending himself why he did it, where he did it, instead of all these lies. I just want to know what really happened that 30 minutes or 45 minutes of that night. The family was convinced Gage Bethune was lying about what really happened. Police seemed skeptical too and questioned him for a second time. We feel that you weren't completely honest with us. Police said Praveen's phone records showed he did not call a drug dealer during his time in the pickup. And Bethune conceded he had done drugs before as he was questioned by Carbondale detective Brooke Hamill. So then it's my understanding that you've done coke before. You know, you know how it makes you feel. Okay. And during this interview, Bethune told investigators that scuffle was more violent than he first described. He jumped out, swung on me aggressively. I defended myself. I missed the punch and I hit him one good time that I know of. And that's when he kind of fell to me, dead weight, and grabbed me. We rolled down the hill a little and exchanged punches. Bethune said he had lied to the trooper that night that he'd been robbed by a black man because he'd been drinking and wanted to divert attention away from himself, fearing a DUI. Still, even with that evidence, the Jackson County State's Attorney said their death investigation found Praveen died of hypothermia, an accident that did not support criminal charges. I never, ever, 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 ever Lovely says she felt Bethune was still lying about big details and even small ones. Remember, Bethune said he turned off his truck? The trooper's dash cam showed it was running with exhaust clearly visible. He repeated the same lies over and over again. Even more painful to the family, 
Their second autopsy showed Praveen may have suffered in the woods for hours before he died. It goes through my head a million times a night. And we stayed in that hotel there. So to me, I'm like, why did I ignore my child? If he was here, if I knew he was here, I would have just run through here in a heartbeat and found him. Praveen's parents were devastated and refused to accept the prosecutor's decision not to file charges. So they filed a civil lawsuit accusing the Carbondale police of botching the investigation and Gage Bethune of causing the death of their son through blunt force trauma. If I don't fight for him, who would? I won't give up. Bethune did not respond to her calls at the time, but Carbondale radio host Monica Zuka says she reached him by phone. He was scared. He, his voice was shaky. He said, this is the worst thing that's ever happened to me in my whole life. He said, I've talked to the police. I've told them everything I can. Please leave me alone. We're going to get justice for this kid. But Praveen's family turned up the heat, organizing rallies, contacting congressmen and calling for a special prosecutor. We feel like the prayers are being answered slowly. Three and a half years after his death, Praveen's family got its wish. The police chief was fired, the state's attorney backed down, and a special prosecutor called a grand jury, which indicted Gage Bethune on two charges of first-degree murder. It took everything in me to get to this point. I never doubted my son's death. I knew from day one that he was injured, and someone caused those injuries to him. Gage Bethune's attorney fought back hard during the trial in 2018, saying Praveen was intoxicated and enraged, and he started the fight because Bethune told him to get out of the truck. He called two pathologists who testified the wounds Praveen got from the fight were superficial, and he died from hypothermia after running into the woods wearing only jeans and a t-shirt. Even the prosecution said Praveen and Bethune had been out looking to buy cocaine, something Praveen's family struggled to accept. But he said Praveen did not know where to get it. So the, that story is what Gage said. So we don't know what was happening between Gage and Praveen. We just have to believe that's what happened. The prosecution then argued Bethune admitted he punched Praveen above the eyebrow and said that inflicted great bodily harm, causing Praveen to lose control and become disoriented, which led to his death. After two weeks of testimony, the case went to the jury. They came back in seven hours. The verdict, guilty on one count of first-degree murder. The sentence, up to 60 years. The verdict, guilty. Yes. What goes through your mind? I said a prayer in my head, I mind, I said, thank you, Jesus. Praveen's day has come. Still, Lovely's quest for justice was not over yet. Bethune hired a high-profile Chicago attorney named Stephen Greenberg. He filed an appeal on grounds the jury may have been confused by the wording used in the original indictment against Bethune. We took a look at the case. We know what we're doing. There were a lot of flaws in this proceeding. The appellate court agreed, siding with Bethune, overturning his conviction, and calling for a new trial before he served his sentence. Lovely says she never wanted prison, just the truth and an apology. And every court appearance that we went, I hoped he would just come up to me and say, I'm sorry. He did not do that. Does Gage Bethune have any sympathy for the Varghese family and what they've been through? Of course he has sympathy for what the family's Why been through. Why hasn't he shown it at any point? Well, what's he supposed to do? You're charged with a crime. Anything you say or do can and will be used against you. Think about that phrase. If you say, I'm sorry, if you send flowers, anything you do can be construed by a prosecutor as an admission of guilt. He regrets what happened, but look at what this has done to his life. Where is the sympathy for someone who is wrongly accused because you've got an overzealous mother? A mother who says she's simply fighting for a son who is not here to fight for himself. I'm a minority, but I am a mother. I will never, ever give up. More than two years after his conviction was overturned, it's unclear if Gage Bethune will be tried again. Still, Lovely and Matthew Verigi say everyone now knows what happened. And when they visit their son's grave, they feel Praveen can finally rest in peace. I told him we got justice, rest in peace, I'll see you soon. 100% in my mind, I know we got justice for my son.